Welcome to Thrive Radio. I'm your host, Amy Montgomery, entrepreneur and digital marketing agency owner. Today, my guest is Lisa Jensen. She's a ghostwriter who works with entrepreneurs and business owners who want to write a book to establish credibility and position themselves as an expert. Lisa, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so can you share your journey with us? How did you become a ghostwriter? Why did you become a ghostwriter? All of that. Yes, I've been a freelancer for years and I worked for lifestyle magazines and I got this job with one in particular that had me on a beat interviewing people and writing articles about them. And I got really interested in that. I just found that I loved talking to people, learning their stories and then telling their stories and the kind of the gratitude and the response that I got from the people that I wrote about made me think, I want to do this. Is this something I could do for a living? And it turns out, yeah, that's what ghostwriting is all about. Well, so in walking through your journey, what are you grateful for? I think the thing I'm most grateful for is that I'm able to use my skills to help others get heard because everybody has a story. They have something to say. They have some kind of value they can share with the world, but not everybody has the skills to do that. Or maybe some they could write it. They just don't have the time to do it. And I've always had a natural talent for writing. So over the years, I furthered my education. I've honed those skills and talents. And I'm just so grateful to be able to use that as a career to help others get their stories out. Yeah, it's interesting because I have done marketing for about three different public figures that are on television. They all use ghostwriters. Everyone thinks that they write their own books. Yeah. But they all, they absolutely all have ghostwriters. And so I want to talk a little bit about because there's not everybody realizes that they think, Oh, I'm going to get a Joyce Myers book. Guess what? She doesn't write her books. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) That's right. A lot of people don't know that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what ghostwriting is. They're paying somebody to write this book and they're paying for the rights to be able to publish it as their own. Otherwise it's plagiarism. (laughs) This is an actual legitimate thing where you pay somebody to write your book and then you publish it under your own name, you know, your name as the author. And I offer different levels of help depending on what the client needs. The process starts with an interview so I can figure out where they're at and see is where's their book? Is it just an idea? Have they gotten started on it at all? Do they have a finished manuscript? Do they want to write it themselves with some guidance from me or do they want me to write the entire thing? So once I know where they're at, I can develop a plan for them and we can start writing the book. And if they want to write it on their own, I can help them flesh out the idea and get it outlined. I can review their chapters and give them feedback on that. Or if they already have a manuscript, I can give feedback on that and I can edit it too. And I can even format it for submission to an agent or a publisher. Or if they want to self-publish, I can format it if that's the direction they want to go. So there's that's the thing that people don't know is there's all these different types of formats that you might need just depending on where you want to go. If somebody wants me to write the entire book for them, I can do that too. They just still need to understand it's a collaboration. It's not just, hey, write my book about this and then see it in six months. They need to work with me. They have to provide the vision for the book, the information that they want to go into it. And then I take care of the rest the writing it, formatting it, having it edited by a professional editor, having a book cover designed if they want to self-publish. So just those different levels are different things that ghostwriters can do. Does it help you in the process if they have things like YouTube videos on the topic that they've already talked about or other maybe blog posts or other pieces that they've actually created that you can glean from? Definitely. That's what something I was going to mention is a lot of times They've already essentially written their book if they've blogged a lot about the topic. And we can just go in and if they want me to write it, that's fine. I can go in and review those blog posts or review those video posts and see what kind of information is there and uh, get it down into book form and something that's readable and engaging and that flows from one point to the next so that it's something that's publishable. Okay. So what are some of the qualities that create a professional book? First, I want to say just because a book's self-published, it doesn't have to look (laughs) self-published. And the answer though to your question isn't just about self-publishing. It because if a purpose if a person wants to publish through traditional publisher or have an agent, try and get an agent to get them a foot in the door with a traditional publisher, the manuscript still needs to be professional. 
So the qualities for both directions, whether you're going traditional or self-published or even hybrid, is you need a well-written manuscript that flows well and keeps the reader engaged. And it should be professionally edited and proofread, not by a family member or your friend. It's got to be somebody who knows what they're doing. And those elements apply to traditionally published books and self-published ones. In the case of self-publishing, professionally designed book cover is super important because it's your book's first impression. If that's not done well, if it's not eye-catching, it just won't look professional and people aren't likely to take it seriously. Yeah. So do you help with the book cover design or do you work with specific designers at all? I work with specific designers. I think that people do one thing really well, even if they have talents in several different areas. And I have designed book covers before, but I just work with some really talented book cover designers that really know what they're doing and they have the right software to do it. And they've got the resources to get the right images. And so I would just rather hand that off to them because that's going to result in a higher quality product in the end for the client. Yeah, most definitely. And I'll reiterate what you said about the proofing because I wrote four books four books, four books, many years ago, <laughs> my first one. <laughs> now I was born dyslexic. However, they say I'm a genius in reading and writing, but I'm, it, that doesn't include proofing oh, yeah. <laughs> because I see words differently. I learned to read in the way that a dyslexic will learn to read whatever that, however that difference is, I probably will never know, but it's very easy for me to make spelling errors, even though I can read it and write really well. And I remember taking my book and putting it through Grammarly and thinking, okay, Grammarly's got it. And no, <laughs> they don't. I even hired somebody else to go through and read it and have her edit it if there was any errors that she found. She said that she was a professional, but she wasn't. And instead she wanted to argue with all of my points in my book. And I was like, I don't want that type of feedback. I, don't I didn't care. ask you for that. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I just wanted errors. Yeah, so I think reiterating just having somebody that's qualified and you know they're qualified, like you pay for yeah. what you get, right? Yeah. Absolutely, you do, you do. And as far as like not having your friend read it or you reading it several times and thinking, oh no, it's great. You know what it's supposed to say. So your brain's going to make you see that it's yeah. <laughs> so, it be daily. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the top things to avoid when you're writing a book or getting your first book published? So many. This, and this actually flows really well from what we were just talking about. The I can do it all mindset was the first thing that came to mind when you asked that. Because again, you may be able to do a lot of it. And I know some authors, for instance, do their own book covers, but they have backgrounds in like graphics and design and they have the software to do a really great job. But for the most part, you really need that team behind you who are good at what they do so they can help you make the most of what you're good at and help you put out a really good professional book. But also something to avoid with the publishing industry changing so much over just the last few years. It seems like it's changing daily now. But the lines of work, there are some really terrific indie publishing companies out there. And there are some that are considered hybrid publishers. And they're really great too, but there's a lot of vanity publishers out there. And they're masquerading as legitimate publishers. And Oh, the lines are just so blurred, it's hard to tell. So you really have to do your research and know who you're talking to and know what you're dealing with. And just really quick, the differences between all of those, the indie publishers are a lot like the traditional big name publishers, Random House and Penguin and the people that you know, but they're smaller and they some of them tend to work with just one type of genre, like maybe one publisher will only publish romance novels and the other one will only publish like self-help or something, but they essentially work with you the way that one of the big publishers would. It's just that they're on a smaller scale and you may end up putting some of the bills for some of the marketing or helping out a lot with the marketing. Actually, even the big publishers expect that now. Yeah. But then hybrid publishers is like a bridge between indie publishing and self-publishing because they can offer a self-published author 
a lot of the services that you would need to look for and it's all in one place. So you don't have to go out and look for an editor, or look for a book cover designer, or look for somebody to format your book. And it's typically art. You can say, I can, I've already got my book cover designed, but I need somebody to format it. So the hybrid publishers are super helpful with that. And you do pay them, but you're paying for those services. So you're going to be getting the royal when you start earning royalties on that book. And then the vanity publishers come across, come across like they're a publisher, but they'll tell you that you need to pay for upfront for all of the expenses that are going to be incurred. You can end up paying like 10, 10 excuse me, $10,000 or more for what they're supposedly going to offer you, but you don't really end up getting any of that. I, I just met an author a couple of weeks ago who was so excited because this publisher wanted to publish her book. So she paid him that big fee to, to get this started because she was saying she understood that it's all about the author working for it more because it's her book. And so she understands that. But I started reading her book and it obviously had not been edited, even though they told her that they sent it through their editing department. There were inconsistencies in the story that an editor should have picked up. There were typos left and right. And it just made me a little bit sick. And I thought, I really wished I would have met you before you signed that contract with them. Because that's another thing. They sign a contract with you. And so they've got the rights to your book, not completely, but they've got like a certain amount of time that they're in charge of your book. And so now she's stuck with them and she's paid them all this money. And it's a really inferior quality book that's gone out there. So it's just really important to do your research, find out who you're dealing with. Um, another thing, really, I don't know, did you have a comment about that? No, I, I was going to say, there's nothing worse than getting a book out there and then all of your friends and family get a copy and then start po pointing out the errors. Yeah, yeah. And I just felt sick because I didn't know what to say to her because she was so excited about it. And, yeah. But as going back to things that you want to avoid, and as far as that goes, you would want to avoid any publishers or agents or ghostwriters who guarantee you a bestseller because you definitely want a ghostwriter who can get you a well-written manuscript, but you also need to understand that's only 50% of it because the next thing to avoid is to avoid underestimating how much marketing plays a part. These days, it's all about marketing. Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it always was, but now these days, even more. And you can have the great American novel or the best transformational self-help book of all time, but without a good marketing strategy, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. I'll tell you on a just side note, I've had a few people come to me and want and ask about marketing their book. And then they end up going with some other person. <laughs> It has no clue what to do. And if you're going to go out and nowadays, if you have a printed book and you want to do the New York Times bestseller, you have got to be out there doing PR. You've got mm -hmm. to be on every show you could possibly get yourself on. So you need a PR agent and you need to actually have a nowhere to go to get those and get yeah. a good one. And then on top of that, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to sell X amount of books from the bookstores. Yeah. within a one week period mm -hmm. in order to make those lists. And if you don't make it, like all of it's for naught. And you could go for an Amazon bestseller, which is a little bit easier, but not by much. <laughs> yeah, not really, because there's so many books published every day. Yeah. And and, yeah. So it just takes a lot of work. And I think people don't realize they just think, oh, I'll just, I've got my social media page. I got my social media group and that's all I really need to do. I'll just run a Facebook ad. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Give it a shot and yeah. I'll talk to you in a week. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you, see you soon. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's the really big misconception because I had an interview with someone who asked me, okay, can you guarantee a best-selling book? And I'm like, no, I can't. I can guarantee you I'm going to write you the best book possible that I can write and that you will be ecstatic with the results. But that's when the work starts because then you have to market it. Yeah. I can't guarantee you a bestseller. And I don't think any publisher should guarantee that either. I mean, yeah, especially because most of them don't even do the marketing. Yeah. They're like, oh, we'll give you a landing page. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can't and, give anybody to that landing page, but what does that do you? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do a thing. If there's no, nobody, yeah, it's, it doesn't do a thing. Yeah, so definitely. So right. along those lines, what should you look for in a ghostwriter if somebody's out there and they're considering several different ghostwriters? Because I've actually seen people say, oh, just go on to Fiverr or Upwork to find a ghostwriter. What would you recommend? Again, remember when you said you get what you pay for? If you go someplace like that, you will get what you paid for. You are going to need to understand that for somebody to write a good quality book, you're going to be paying for their time to research it. Even if you provide them with a lot of the information, there's still research time because they have to become familiar with what you want them to write about. And plus there's their skills and their talent. And so know that up front that no, you can't just go to Fiverr or Craigslist or <laughs> somewhere like that. Yeah, you'll find somebody, but you're not going to be happy with the results. But as far as what to look for someone who's writing you like, and you should have at least read something that they wrote. And if you're just like starting out and contacting people and you're like, oh, you're a ghostwriter, would you be willing to work with me? You're going to have some writing samples from them. And they're, for, they're not going to be able to tell you what books they've written typically because that's the whole point, right? They've sold the rights to that story that they've written and someone else has published it under their name. But they should be able to provide you with references for people that they've worked with who can give you an idea of how the working relationship was and whether, and usually if there are references, it's gonna be glowing, so. But they should at least have some references and they should be able to give you some samples at least because most of us got into this business by writing things under our own names. So they should at least be able to give you some writing samples. And then, Definitely spend at least one phone call or one Zoom call or an in-person meeting if you're nearby talking with them to meet them to see if it's somebody you can work with because it can be just be this brilliant writer, but if your energy doesn't mesh, if your personalities, if you can't get along with them, it's going to be a miserable working relationship for both of you, actually, just frankly. So it should be somebody that you can work with and that you enjoy at least long enough to spend six months worth of time with them. And that's going to be a minimum. It might take longer. Also look for somebody who's dedicated to your authorial voice. Somebody who will tell your story in your voice and not try to impose their style on it. I got uh, early on when I started ghostwriting, I was criticized a couple times for the books not being put, not sounding a certain way. But that's what I'm dedicated to is putting it out there the way the person who hired me wants it to be. Yeah. It was in their voice. I, there weren't like grammatical errors and things like that. It's just these people who were doing the criticizing thought that it should have been done differently. And that's all I'm saying is it's your book. It should be told in your voice the way you want it told. And so if somebody is just really adamant about, no, it needs to be done this way, then maybe look for somebody else. And again, at the same time, they should still be able to produce a professional manuscript and offer advice on language and grammar and story structure, the mechanical things that are going to make for a well-written manuscript. But it's a balance between the two. Yeah. And they'll provide an estimated timeline with milestones and goals for getting the book done on time. Like after this amount of time, we should be 25% done and we should be 50% done by here. And at the end, and it's always estimated because it's going to depend on whether you both can accomplish the things that are expected of you in the project on time. If I write 25% of it and I send it to the client and they take longer than they meet than they should in getting back with me and saying, okay, yeah, it looks great. Let's move on. Then no, I can't guarantee that's going to be done within six months. So they'll provide you also with a contract that outlines these things. And like how much they're going to charge and what, where the milestones will hit and when payments will be due from you and what's expected on your part and what they're going to take care of. And it should also include a non-disclosure statement, non-disclosure agreement, because this is all about providing you with a project that you're going to publish under your own name. There's some times when people like publish under their name as told to or their name with Amy Montgomery as told to Lisa Jensen or by Amy Montgomery with Lisa Jensen. That's between you and the ghostwriter though. Those are things you can agree on. And just in the end, 
the bottom line of that whole point was that it's your story. So it should be something that that they do not talk to other people about having written it. Yeah. Yeah. So important. Yeah. And you think about it, like uh, all, like we were mentioned, like all these public figures that have all these books and people don't realize there's ghost writers that are just taking their messages that they speak and putting them together in a book. And if anyone, if somebody started going around and be like, oh yeah, so I do, I write all Tony Robbins books. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it would just be a, a PR nightmare because people oh, just sure. don't get it. There's a percentage of the population that just can't digest the reality. I know, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if Tony Robbins writes his own books or not. I'm not saying. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but, but I, you know. It's a perfect example because most people like him don't have time to. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Yeah. He's definitely a great speaker and knows his stuff. But if you don't have time to write a book, then you'd never get a book written. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no time to go away into a cabin for five months and write a book. Like <laughs> yeah. Some people do. And you're thinking, oh, man, if only you knew the people that you're trying to keep up with. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just not realistic. It's not realistic. So what are some of the top areas people get stuck with in the book writing process? Oh, Wow. There's a few. I think the biggest one is overwhelm because writing a book, no matter how long it is, if it's just a 20,000 word self-help book or an epic novel, it's just a huge undertaking. And so overwhelm stops people a lot of times before they even get started. But also knowing how to start or if you know how to start, if you, once you get started, knowing what the next step is, if you can get past the overwhelm and start, that doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, you're home free because then you have to go to the next step and the next. So finding professional, reliable people to be that team I mentioned who can help them publish a book that they've always wanted to publish is so important because even just knowing the next step, you know, helping me, okay, I've got this manuscript, now what? Let's get it edited. How good is it? And what changes should be made? And Let's correct the mistakes and let's get it to the next part. So, yeah, it's such a process. Without naming names, can you share some of your client success stories? I have worked with such a diverse group of clients, like business people and entrepreneurs, and some people who just wanted to write a book as like a bucket list item. And I think the one that stands out to me the most is a book that I wrote for a woman who overcame a lifetime of abuse to go on to inspire others to step outside of their own situations and transform their lives. And that's, I have to admit, that's like the type of book I really love to work on are the ones with entrepreneurs and business people who write that semi-autobiographical kind of a book where they work in personal stories alongside tenants and principles that they teach. It's just, it makes for really interesting reading and it can be educational as well. Yeah, it's really neat. And that, that inspires me. So what do you think has been your truth that has gotten you this far in your journey? I think it has to be having a good work ethic and being of service to others. And that kind of goes hand in hand because you put all your best into whatever job you do. And it's just, it's like a double blessing. It, it blesses you. It blesses the other person, the person you're working for. Some of the most fun projects I've worked on are ones that were me just starting out to help somebody with no agenda of landing a client or a paying job. But then that typically opens doors and leads to other opportunities that leads to other opportunities. So no matter what I'm working on, I just do the best possible job I can to make sure that the client is happy with the end result and seeing their happiness and satisfaction just really makes it so worthwhile. If you were able to give yourself one piece of advice when you first started out, what would it be? I would tell my younger self that my natural skills are valuable and to look for a way to use them to do my life's work. Because early on, writing was so easy for me that I honestly didn't even consider it a talent. I thought, it's this easy. Everybody can do it, right? If I can do it this easy. And it wasn't until later on that I realized, no, some people can't even string words together. And that's not saying something bad against them. It's just 
It's something that I can do that some other people can't. And it was a long time before I had the courage to apply for my first writing job. But I'm so glad I did because it led to me finding this purpose that I've discovered of helping those who don't have the knack or even the time, because a lot of times they do have the knack. They just don't have the time to get their book written. And I just love being able to help people do that. So Lisa, if there's someone that would love to work with you, what's the best way to contact you? I would say my email address, it's um, ldj at lisadwrites.com. And that's my initials for Lisa Diane Jensen at Lisa D, L-I-S-A-D-W-R-I-T-E-S dot com. Perfect. And that's the most direct way to get to me. All right. And I'll put all your social media links down below. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your expertise. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. I yeah. love talking to you, Amy. Yeah, likewise. And if you're listening, you want more information about this podcast and upcoming shows, you can visit a call to thrive.com. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful week.